Thank you. Well, it's 9 30. We'll call the meeting to order with everyone present. First on the um, just the project updates. Exclusive of on Friday, they poured a chunk of the intersection with 265th Avenue going south. That's not cured out yet, but everything else that they had poured during the week has gotten strength, and so we're letting people get on it. Um, hopefully, they won't put a lot of real heavy loads on it, but it is it is curing really, really, really slow. The curve's got it at 56 hours, and um, the more you know, we had a cool rainy weekend, that doesn't help anything, but um, it's over twice what we're used to seeing for times. But again, this is the new concrete that we're forced to use and um, it doesn't have as much cement as material in it. it. Doesn't generate the heat that it used to generate and curves along. That's just how, how it is. Why is the, why has it changed that? It's just because cement's expensive? No, um, the main push to it is when you make cement, there's, you have a carbon footprint when you do that. They, this came out to try to reduce that carbon footprint. So they put lime in instead of some of the cementous material. And then the, the industry gets carbon credits for it. it. But by doing that, you reduce the cementous material, which is what reacts. It's called heat hydration. And that's what gets the heat and gets it to cure. And when you have less of it, it just takes longer. And that's, that's the way it is. Um, but our strengths were just, it took three days for it to crack. I mean, they poured it on a Monday and I didn't see the cracks in the joints until Wednesday. And normally the next morning, the joints are starting to. Wait, as we see it in our bridge decks, um, the deck on bridge 237 is on. It's probably going to be 14 days before we strip it. And we used to strip it in seven. It just so it is. It's nothing we can do with it. It's just the cement we have to work with, and that's what we get. So um, you'll probably see some changes in the industry, more admixtures and things like that. But those admixtures are all chemical things that are made by man. And I don't see why we want to just keep putting more admixtures in when we have cementous material that we can just use. That's the way the, the industry is is going. So um, the pre-con for bridge 317, which is on the dead end, Ren Valley Road, that's Thursday. Um, I don't know what the contractor is really wanting to do for a timetable. Um, I think he's starting to itch to get in, but I know he's got some other box extensions somewhere else that he might go to first. But um, we're getting close to that one getting started up. Um, when Brennan's finished 237, they are going to leave the county. Um, I think they're going to Howard County, but I don't know that for sure. And then they're coming back, and then they'll start those box columns. Um, one's up in Highland Township, and the other one is on um, uh, 295th Avenue down in Jackson Town. Thank you. Right. Jackson Township, though. Jim, the landowner come to an agreement with the county. He wanted to be in. in yeah, we've talked to him. He's pretty agreeable. And he just wanted to get through the pre-construction meeting to find out what the contractor's planning to do and then you know, sign off. Because we kind of told him, if you don't sign it, this isn't happening. It's, we'll just leave it the way it is. And, but he's always been really, really good to work with. I think he just wants to know a few more things, which I understand. Um, the... Uh, we got an invoice for the first truck that's done. We haven't received it yet. It's still sitting over here in the truck country. It had a code thing that came up in and they were going to deal with that. They sent us an invoice and I don't agree with that invoice. Um, and Jeff doesn't agree with it either. And we kind of kicked it back to him. So we need the details of how you came to this number. Because what we have is where we started when we let those things two years ago. And, you know, well, you guys were here when they hit us with that surcharge. Um, they hit us twice with those. And um, 
we're still not making that number work. So I, I want to, I want to itemize. Show me all the steps of the increases we took, so we know exactly what we're paying for. How the far off are we? I'm thinking they're off like twenty grand per truck. And maybe I'm missing it, and that's fine if I am. But I want to see it yeah. laid out so I know. And they're, yeah, they say we owe them hundred. Two seven and seven was the boxes, the plows, the hydraulics. We had all of that, so we paid that bill. But all that was left was the balance of the chassis, and then we we're going to pay that till they show up. They had to mount it. One is done. I, I know they want to get paid for them because they've been sitting on them for quite a while. I mean, I'm sure they're probably paying interest on those chassis, and they don't want to be doing that. But I can't see where that number's working, and um, so we'll see what they come up with for a more detailed uh, uh, layout on that. Um, we had a, a meeting last week for that SS4A grant, and um, as of that meeting, the consultant says they have everything they need, so they're going to get that kind of pulled together, um, and then hopefully, well, we got a little over a month. And that thing is due to the feds. So um, that should be behind us now, and we can do, you know, not have to deal with that. Uh, the salt shed up at Locust, the guys have done some pretty good work in getting that leveled off. Um, they kind of moved it a little bit from where we originally wanted to put it. I don't really have an issue with it. They're the ones that got to lift the thing and where it sits and how they load it and unload it. So um, they moved it a little bit. They're not pouring out on that fill, are they? Um, they're pouring some of it has some fill in it. I'm not, not really worried about not it. where the deep fill is. No, not the deep no, fill. No. It's yeah, compaction. If you go when you when you drive in, you can kind of almost drive straight into the fuel barrels. It's going to be right to the right of those fuel barrels. We were going to be dark down further, but um, they decided not to do that. They want it up tight against those barrels, and it makes sense what they want to do. So. Um, I, don't, I really don't have any issues with it. So, um, yeah. Um, we talked about that. That. Oh, Kanoski, he's got one more pour to go. Hopefully, only one. He might do it in two. I don't think he's going to. Um, on that box that's on W14, then that box will be done and all of those extensions are complete. And then we just have to finish the backfills. We have them all undone. Um, it's been well, well, probably about almost a year for him to get them all done, but um, that'll be a lot better for when we go to page W14. So, um, other than that, not a whole lot's going. Blades are running. We got some places got quite a bit of rain, um, four or five inches. Some, you know, two and a half to three. Well, just depends on where you were, but. Um, the blades are running, trying to get after it, and um, we had some fresh rock on some roads, so that blade or that rain was welcomed. I mean, it, it, that's going to help. Um, that should keep those guys busy for a couple days, and I think there's a chance of rain Wednesday, but then not a great one, but better chance Friday. So we'll uh, should have some good blading weather here for a while. But so that's all I got. Not a whole lot. Try to keep it short and sweet. We had to uh, pour out a, a bunch more on that. Yeah, it, it, in town in Calmer, um, we've done a lot of coring on that, and we knew it was soft. But it, there's a few spots that just they weren't healing. Um, that's probably the one really good thing about the dump trucks when they are hauling back and forth. They're going to show you where those spots that's are, um, and they found them. And um, our guys were down there Thursday, Friday. Um, Working on them. I haven't seen them this morning. I didn't get a call back from Mike or Mike said I'm, I'm assuming that they're doing okay. <clears throat> the trucks will hit them again today, and um, hopefully they're now going to be firmed up enough where we're going to be comfortable paving on them. But um, if you drove that section before we took the concrete out of it, there wasn't an unbroken panel in there. We knew it was soft, and it's just soft. Very, very soft. But so are they all the way up to mushrooms? 
they have to mosh it or 258th avenue which is my six i don't okay. live there but um they got to that point they feel by tuesday they will be into calmer and that will really start to slow them down because they have to do it in parts so people can get in and out um they can't just pull through it because you know, that's just going to not work for everybody's accesses but um like everything up to what they did i think wednesday they got two mosh eggs um that's all drivable except that one little piece going on the 265th if anybody gets on that that might ruin it but uh, stuff's green stays green a long time a lot longer than it should but hopefully the heavy heavy paving will be done by tuesday the weather's supposed to be good it's done it helps a lot yeah it's this we talked about that 10 hour day things and this this came up at some analysis that you did mm -hmm. back when and it looked like do you think that we've changed so much that we that that's really not the benefit that is that's a nice piece of work um by the way if if this was done yeah this would work but um i've had multiple conversations the guys hold this in their hand um if they get moving in the morning and stay out late until it's time to come back in this does work but we're not seeing them. We're yeah, just not seeing it. This was really a nice piece of work. That I mean, analysis. I've said before, I like the four tens. On paper, they work great, but the paper doesn't control. And you know, we've gone back and forth on these for the past ten years. We've done it for five years, and five years we didn't. And it's just people's opinions on whether it's worthwhile or not. And um, on paper, they work great, but. The last year, it just, when you see machines pulling out at 7.30, that's an hour and a half they've been sitting there. I realize they have to go through and make sure, you know, check oil and things like that, but it doesn't take an hour and a half. And can't be everywhere. And apparently, you know, when stuff's broke down, you know it's broke. Mechanics are heavily involved when it breaks down. and. I can't contribute it to that. And, and it's not the whole crew. There were some guys that absolutely made great use of this, got going in the morning because they liked it. They really liked it and made the best use of it. But it wasn't everybody. And we warned them last year, you guys got to make this work. And they didn't. At least not in my opinion. That's, and I like the four tenths on paper. I think they're great. But, um, and that was a tough sell back when we first started it that you know this is what it is the public typically doesn't like the idea that they're gone fridays it's just looked at it but i mean it's an argument that can be like when they leave the shop they have to put the time down mm -hmm. they i mean if you're, they're going to be gone they know to, well, they have to ask their foreman you know can i be gone no, but they're not going in the morning like when they would with their they uh they they have two things they do. They have a timesheet that they fill out, and basically that's when you come to work, when you take lunch, when you stop lunch, and when you go home. And then if you left for a funeral or you're sick or whatever, you know, those are it's cataloged in there. Um I put years ago just um a log for them to write down things. This is long before we could track the machines. We didn't know where everybody was at. And so and so Joe Public calls and says, you know, that machine been sitting there by the side of the road all day. He hasn't done anything. Well, I don't, I don't well, what was he doing? When they write it in their log, you know, my machine broke down, was there for an hour, and the mechanics came and fixed it. Or they were laying out rock. Well, I saw him at one o'clock sitting there eating a sandwich. Well, he was laying out rock from 12 to 1. He didn't want to leave the windrows in. So he was prudent in what he did and got that laid out. Then he took his lunch, but the public looks at it that it wasn't his lunchtime and he was screwing around. And so I came up with these logs to say, you know, just write down what you did. And nine times out of 10, that is backed up when someone calls to complain, they weren't doing their job. Yeah, they were. I looked in their log. This is what they were doing. But we have a fair amount that I was told by one of them, he says, I'm not a secretary. I don't have time for that. And their logs are junk. They don't really write anything. 
I mean, it's they're not what they put in there isn't um, false. It's just it's not exactly. much detail, and that detail is what makes the difference. And um, we use them for flood events. You know, if you can write, I was on these roads, rocking these roads because of a flood. We can get that to FEMA, and they don't have an argument. But when they just put blading all day, where? I mean, that, that, that didn't help me. I don't doubt that's what they were doing, but where? Not every road needs to be bladed every day. Some need almost every day. Some can go weeks. Just depends on the road. Write it down. Cover your butt. That CYA is there for a reason. And so what happens if they don't want to do that? How do I? Punish a guy for writing what he did. I mean, what you might think is adequate detail, I might disagree with, and vice versa. It's just what do they feel is the best detail? The more detail you give, the better off here. I mean, I don't want to know that at you know at one thirty I stop to go to the bathroom on the side of the road. I don't need to know that. But if you stop for a reason, why did you stop? Why did you pick the road you did? Just this is where I was. And I can see that really helping too if someone oh, wrong in to complain that oh, their gravel hasn't good. been maintained in two months and yeah. you could go back and, and now say, I mean with, well on this date they did it, this date they did it. Um it's you have something when you can go back. I mean, and now we track them. All the machines, not all the machines like the Oshkosh aren't tracked, but um the blades, the trucks, they're tracked. You know where they've been. Then you know if they sat there for an hour. I mean, you, you know where they are, and that takes a little pressure off what they were. You can tell by how fast they're going. Did they go boogieing down that road with their blade up because they were headed over to some problem that they got called to, or were they actually blading that road as they were going? Because their speed will tell you that. You know, you don't blade at 20 miles an hour. That doesn't happen. And so it that, <laughs> that technical or uh, electronics and, and GPS has kind of taking pressure off that log. Um, but there's still things on there that, you know, if they stopped, why? And if you can write down why, great. Now I, I got a great argument. So I think the question was, do you use that and this uh, tracking software to know when they're leaving in the morning from the shop? So then that's how you're basing the fact that they aren't leaving on time? Or is it observations oh, it just, or? A little bit of all of it. I mean, you go by and the machine's pulling out at 7.30 and you go back through their log and there's no justification why it didn't go. Should we should we consider doing some kind of in-service training to try to teach them the, the benefit? And I mean, we've been doing this for a while. And like I said, I had one of them tell me, I'm not a secretary. This is not what I'm supposed to do. That may be, but... I'm not, you know, my job description doesn't say that I do secretarial work either. We can write, we can write in the job descriptions. But, uh, I mean, again, it's going to come back to duties as assigned. I mean, really, they, they yeah. see they need to yeah. follow what they're. But what detail yeah. do you want? Because some, I'll tell you, some guys give me more than I need. They, they really do. And I'm not faulting them for that. I mean, no. That would be it, but some just, just. Scheduling isn't that just a department head decision at this point? Yeah. But again, I don't believe in micromanaging. I mean, one of my best operators, I never have ever questioned where he's at, ever. I can go and track him now. I know where he's been. His log is terrible. It's terrible. But I know when that that machine leaves when it's it's supposed to leave and it doesn't come back unless until it needs to or something major happens. I have a hard time coming down if he doesn't write everything the way I'd like it to see written when I know he's covering every mile he needs to cover. So, and they're not all that. I mean, some are better than others. That's just the nature of the beast. So going forward for future reference, would it be good to assign somebody to actually monitor what time people are leaving and what time they're getting back? Well, uh, this summer to say, is it productive or is it not? There's an assistant foreman in every shop that knows where when those guys are leaving where they're headed and there's foreman that are running around putting out fires everywhere that they they can talk to them too i mean it's 
it's there. It's just, it's not working. It's not working as good as I'd like it to work. What's the trend on, um, I mean, they've all earned vacation time. People should take vacation that they've earned. I'm not speaking against that in any way, but are you seeing any trends on Thursdays being taken off to create the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Four it, day? It, when you go to the four tens, Thursday becomes the new Friday. I mean, that's human nature. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's just how it is. And, and that is their vacation time. And uh, yes, they're supposed to ask for it, but you know, I have a hard time telling them no when some of those guys, if you tell them no, they're going to be giving time back. I mean, they're, they're banked all the way up. Mm -hmm. How do you tell them no? And um, it's not as big of a problem now, but when they first became the engineer, to get time off for the younger employees was difficult because there just wasn't much on there. And the younger guys tend to have younger families where they have kids that are involved in all kinds of stuff. and or there something comes up in the family, you got to deal with it. Just go. We'll take care of it. However, I, I have a hard time telling anybody no because you want to spend time with your family because your kid plays ball or your 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 mom needs you to do something for it because this is the time to do it. And so if you're closed on a Friday, not closed, up the whole department's open mm -hmm. here. And the whole courthouse is open. Yeah, the, the office does not work for If the road crew is off on a Friday and there's some you know, a tree down or something, are we paying overtime for people to go do that? If they are called in, like we got to get a loader to do it, right. yes, absolutely. Because the, the agreement used to be in the collective bargaining agreement, but when that got changed in the law, um, the board took a lot of the things that was in collective bargaining and they made an addendum to the policy that only pertains to my department. And that was left in there that if you get called in, you get a minimum of two hours of overtime. There isn't hardly anything you call them out for that they're not gonna burn two hours to get it done. Mm -hmm. And we're not giving away time by it. That don't matter if it falls on yeah. Friday, Saturday. Yeah, I mean, they'll be called. Yeah, they are gonna get called in. But it's one last day that we're open during our given business hours. Um. Well, the office is open. I mean, but the the shops are not. There's nobody right. there. Yeah. Right. And the, and the, the summer's the time to be out there working on roads. Well, blading. You know, like I've said, if it rains every night, they have some place they can blade. It may not be every road, but there's some place they can blade. Like what I asked you earlier, what's the trend on yeah. Thursdays for vacation taking? So when they tend to take it. So then we're we're down most of our crews Thursday and Fridays both. So now we're looking at three days for people on the road. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair that there's not, we get three probably really solid days and Thursdays said it becomes that new Friday. And again, it's how you look at it. Because when I built this, you watch and we got rain Monday night and we hadn't gotten rain for weeks. You've got two hours that you gained on Tuesday and an hour you gained on Wednesday because it's about a day and a half before the roads start drying up and the blades are not as effective as they could be. So we gain three hours of good blading time. And then there's also all of this windshield time that we we lose one day of that. But I mean, we had an incident here two weeks ago where I mean, Jeff had to deal. The guys were coming back to the shop just because they wanted to sit and eat lunch there. And that's not really how this is supposed to go. You're out. Be out. If you just luck of the draw you by the shop, that's fine. But when you're out, <clears throat> blades typically aren't luck of the draw by the shop. That's just not how it is. And they need to be. I guess I, this is a scheduling thing. This is a department head decision. I wouldn't tell you how to tell your people to come in for elections hours. You run that. <clears throat> All right. I was just the year then to tell these. The that form or whoever's supervising the shops, they need to be more conscientious and keeping track. If, if this is to put it on them, if they can't make this work, then it's going away. I mean, I kind of did that last year. It didn't work. It, you know, I, so, I think like you said, good. on paper, I really think it works great. But if the employees aren't using it to the extent it can be used for it's it it fails i can lecture them all i want and 
but I can't babysit them all. I can't drive to every shop and make sure they're moving. Foreman can't do that. We just got to think the employee isn't going to get going. You're not going to get going. That's all there is to it. But we could watch through the tracking. Room. Well, they, there's a camera watching them. They know every yard has one on it. They know that that's there. And it's, it's not a surprise. But there's no repercussions, obviously. Well, again, Subject. I got maybe you can check on this. I got a phone call about there's a little piece of road outside, right on the edge of Spillville called Dvorak Drive, runs off 14th, oh, yeah, yeah. right there at the very city limits. Yep. Yeah. And Spillville's been plowing it for, Fred plows it for years, mm -hmm. forever. And the uh, one of the property owners came in complaining about none of the road ditches have been cleaned and, and all mm -hmm. the trees hanging over the road. He's right to a degree there, but. I think it's going to open up a can of worms <clears throat> because I think he's got a garage built right on the right of way. Oh, it's very possible those exist. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't. I think it's. But he came in threatening the city of lawsuits if because if the if the water didn't drain out of the ditches and drain into his garage and he was going to sue the city and all this kind of stuff, which was just off the charts. But I think he's completely in the wrong. I went out and took a look at it yesterday. We can look in to see where the right way is. I mean, I I don't doubt there's probably a drainage problem in there. I've been down it. It's yeah. it's it's a very narrow little. It's actually paved too. It's really yeah, paved. it's it's not. But it might be in the city limits. It's like you're saying, well, it's, they're it's not, I mean, Fred, the city maintenance guy came in and talked to Shimmick on on Friday. Yeah, and Shimmick said, no, that's a county road. It is in the county, and it's uh, not a city road. But the guy, I'm. I haven't gone to talk to him personally. He had called me, but I got it through the, the mayor. Mayor called me and said, I, this guy is a, a problem child, but I think he's really got, he's opening up us. Some, some yeah, sometimes you have to be for what you ask for. I know. Mean, yeah, yeah, you might get it in a situation like that. that. From the looks of things, I bet he's got two thirds of his garage is on the right of way. It's not yeah. just a little bit, it's a whole bunch. And we can stake the right of way out and so That's everybody knows good. where it is. and. He might, or I can, I can go talk to him and say, you know, this tree limb that hangs all the way over and touches your garage over the top of the road. Yeah, you might want us to just remove a few of those and leave things alone. Is that uh, what do you think? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, give, give me, give me some help, Lee. I don't know. <laughs> the problem is, once you know, I know. you now know. And um, he, he brought it up. If he wants to push us to figure out where this is at, so be it. We'll find out. But once we know. We got to act on what we know. Yeah. And uh, I think I would bring that to him. Do what? I would bring that to him. Yeah. Because if we let, you know, if we turn our back that that garage is on the right away, which it might be, I don't know. Maybe the right away stops right before you get to it. But um, so in other words, don't stake it yet. So you don't get to talk to him a little bit before, before we go out and, go out and, <laughs> and cover, you know, take the lid off the can. Yeah, I mean, we, we had to do that on Fort. Um, we north out of Fort for the, the bridge that's closed there. Um, they, we got complaints about the road and things, and we went in to look at the right of way, and there were three or four buildings that were partially or fully in the right of way. And um, they're gone now. The landowner moved them, uh, took them a while. And, it, that's going to take a while. You don't really know a building yeah. or not. But um, <laughs> it, it it's not the first time these things have happened. And you just, some of them, I mean, the landowner probably has an argument. It's at the end of the road. It bothers nobody. But we don't get to pick and choose that. And it, it, nothing is supposed to be in our right away. And that's the way it is. So, well, forget we mentioned it, but I'll, I'll go check it. Okay. Yeah. Just briefly, the road oiling. Uh, the property or the road oiling, they said the county has to. What is the policy on if you want your road oiled? Are you about the dust control? Dust control. Yes. You, you, you you have to get a permit. Um, it depends if you're doing it yourself. Some people do do it themselves. Um, come in, get the permit. We give you stakes so that, um, and you have to put those stakes up because when it rains, a lot of the dust control, you can't see it anymore. It, it It's darker normally than the road, but when it goes wet, it all looks the same. 
And if those stakes aren't there, there's a good chance our blades are going to go through it. And that's really going to make people unhappy because they invested in it and we just ruined it. Um, if so, but if you're going to do it yourself, you come in and get the permit. There's no fees for it. Um, if you're going to have a third party do it where they like shoot the road with lignin or I don't know if anybody's using calcium chloride or mag chloride, but um, they work better, but I don't know if anybody's using them. Then that the applicator has the permits and then they go through the applicator and then um, the, the permit has to be brought back to us. The applicators do that. We send them out to the guys and then when they feel that the road is ready, they let us know. And then you got about a week to get it down because if you don't get it down in a week, um, the road conditions could change. If we get rain, if runings are hauling for a project, if, you know, a, a farmer's trying to get, you know, bins emptied or the road gets used, well, now it might not be ready anymore. So you got to be pretty quick to get it down. The applicators know that, but some of the people who do it privately themselves don't realize that that window could get closed on you really fast if you don't get it done. Specifically to this instance, that landowner didn't want the road blade blade in, but the policy is that they can't put the stakes up until they're ready. It's and they don't be ready, and the blade yeah. operator has to give their say yes, the thumbs up before anything. Yeah, gets they shot. don't get to decide if it's ready or not. Yeah. That's our decision. Absolutely our decision. And there's some people that just disagree with our blading policy and and they and, have that right, but um, and there's times when you the road gets so bad after the application where you just have to blade it up anyway because you can't have so many problems and stuff. And people still get mad about that sometimes. Yeah, and it, it's in the application that you know we we have that right. We're telling you, and you sign off that you understand that. And uh, if you don't sign that permit, you can't put anything down. We will go through it then if you if you just put it down on your own without that permit. It can't be there. You need to understand what you're doing. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Uh, next on the agenda, Steve Vandenbrink, uh, proclamation for EM last week. Uh, work with Ben to provide the proclamation. Yes, I got one here. Uh, that there. Okay, well, May 21st through 27th is EMS week. Um, Hillary Carney, she's with the Solomon Group, Roger Hamilton. Uh, with the decor group EMS week, and it's where uh, we emergencies fair begins. And so um, we just like to recognize that and uh, so, uh, having a few um, public presentations throughout the that week as well. So um, again, trying to garner more uh, volunteerism and more people available to actually do EMS services. So. Will you explain what volunteerism means and the, and the issues with it right now, like you did in the EMS meeting? Um, our our issue with volunteerism is it's just like every other volunteerism, it's it's dwindled. So um, become an EMS provider for uh, anywhere. Um, you have to take 200 hours, well, anywhere from 50 to 200 hours of uh, class time, and. Uh, with the 200 hour class, you're, you become an EMT, and that allows you to actually transport patients. 50 hour class is an EMT or a EMR, or first responder, which allows you to really use your hands and your knowledge to treat somebody who's having a medical emergency, trauma emergency, whatever it is. Uh, the hard part is, is that that also takes continuing education every year to stay up to that. Up to that. So now the current course is about twelve hundred dollars if you're taking it just as a course versus about twenty five hundred dollars if you're taking it with college credits. And we just don't see the courses actually being held like they used to be back in. Well, I started this in 1991 and we have class every year. And if we've had a class in the last three years, we'd be lucky. And then we were probably in the last EMT class. So it's a matter of finding those people, getting them interested. It is a good uh, occupation to be in. Um, now it's more of an occupation than what it was before. So we're just making a highlight of 
this and uh, hopefully we'll garner some more information. We do have a class starting in May, the end of May. That's a hybrid class. And that class will actually test out in uh, August. Um, so it goes through the summer, but uh, hopefully we can get some more people interested in that as well. It's, uh, at this point, I've got uh, possibilities of seven to eight people leaving my England service because of retirement. Oh my gosh. Um, and that could happen all in the next five years. Are there scholarships um, for those tuition fees? Yep. Uh, both your, your funding, uh, state funding, uh, as well as other uh, opportunities to have those fees paid as well. Sure. How much is online training versus hands-on training? Uh, currently, the uh, hybrid class um, that's out there, um, you have about five to six days of in-classroom or like Saturday, Saturday mornings you know, in classroom. Uh, the rest of it's online. And then uh, you actually have to provide or do clinical time, 30, I think it's around 20 to 30 hours of clinical time. So where you're riding with an ambulance service or an emergency room, uh, watching people participating in that type of patient care. This is on a volunteer basis? Currently, yes. Yeah, so we have a volunteer ambulance service in Austin and in Frankville. And so, you know, they're in the same boat. They, they just don't have people volunteering to come up to, hey, I'm, I'll, I'll wake up at three o'clock in the morning and go help my neighbor or, or somebody who's had a crash. They just, who wants to do that, you know? Uh, maybe three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, I'm off work. I can't get away from work. I work out of town. Uh, that's the other challenge, you know. So, so you need all the public exposure you can because right. it's a very difficult field. And it's very difficult. And um, today we're, we're seeing volunteer services closing, paid services trying to bring it up, but we don't get the funding like hospitals, you know, we, when I bill, I bill one dollar plus mileage. That's it. Whatever, whatever care I put into that, I need to control that cost as much as possible. It's not like your healthcare where, oh, well, I can charge for that IV start and I can charge for this and that, and I get one lump sum. That's all I get. I'm glad our media is here today to uh, spread this word. <laughs> yeah, because you was a volunteer fighter, I mean, it's the whole, yeah. the whole ball. But yep. It's all for stars and for, you know, people don't realize that when then they say, well, do they, yeah, they don't work on the time clock. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, if you're sacrificing something and you don't yeah. have to do that. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. it's like the volunteer part of it. Yeah. You want to help. Yep. Yeah, so and they're having difficulty filling classes that are good. Yep, yep. Our EMS as as a whole is having difficulties not only filling classes but also having people willing to teach those classes. Um, just as Ramsey did uh, a few years ago, and, and they still continue this point. Um, they just those those educators aren't being Pay for their time to prepare and their knowledge that they have. So they can lose your go to work and be done, you know, and you freeze all our steps and be done for the person's, you know, 40, 50 hours of um, education. So, and volunteerism has really dropped in lots of different, lots of different organizations. Yep. It's too bad. Yeah. So, but I do have to say that uh, we are coming back, and I think it's this week, next week. Uh, we're going to be providing um, hands-only CPR training and stop the bleed training uh, for the county employees, and we've done that. I've done that recently for a church. Um, over there. Um, well, um, even if it's not certified, I know I do a bunch of certifications for uh, different organizations, different businesses as well. So um, hopefully. By doing that, we can garner uh, more information, more interest as well. So, anyone like to take action? I'll move to approve the rest of the uh, proclamation. Second. Mm -hmm.
We have a motion and second to declare May 21st to the 27th EMS week. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those same. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. For the work yeah. you guys do. Yes. They probably know a picture. Yeah. We'd like to get a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see the banner? Can go that way? Can you see the banner? Well, is this in the picture, Kate? Or do we yes. need to move a chair? Because I can move the chair. Uh, well, we should be good, I guess. <clears throat> one more. Three, two, one. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. 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 Thank yeah. Yep. Lynn sends out a email. I know, I yeah. I want to go out there. I want to make sure I did it. Not <laughs> okay. Next on the agenda, a couple miscellaneous items. Uh, first of all, review the budget amendment request. Okay, last week you set the public hearing. It's at the end of the month. It's the Tuesday after Memorial Day. I'm just going to copy the request. That's a copies over here if anyone wants to see that. I'll just go through them quickly. Basically, if you, if there are any of them that you think are questionable, we can get them on the department heads on the agenda the next week or two before the public hearing. I personally don't know that there's any that are that would be controversial, but um, I'll go through them quickly here. I compiled them by department here on this sheet. So I'll start just at the beginning. The county attorney's office switched the, they hired the full-time person that was a county employee rather than billing us for uh, for uh, uh, clerical services provided by their private practice uh, uh, cleric or clerks. And so um, that added a little bit in salary, not significant, that's the 2000, but then also added the health insurance and such for the rest of this year. It's already budgeted in next year's, but we have to get it covered for the, because they hired them back in February. Mm -hmm. County recorder was the only department when I guessed last year, how many uh, employees were going to go for the family insurance versus the single insurance. When you raise the rate, that was the only department that had more than what I guessed. So I have to add a little bit in there to cover their family insurance till the end of the year. In the fiscal year, the road department is just an animal on its own. You'd have to have Lee go through the through the through this. I mean, there's a lot. He's changed many many lines. Basically, you you're funding him the same amount. It's just he's shifting it in lines. It sometimes can look pretty major because maybe a bridge that we start one year that was supposed to get done last fiscal year got rolled over and didn't actually get built until this fiscal year. So. It, that makes the funding look really bad, but in the end, it's all about how much you give them. And since you're giving them the max, he just works within that budget. Um, conservation is all in miscellaneous funds because it's through their um, grants and donations. So they took some more in. Um, and actually, they have a negative amendment because they've taken some grants in and haven't spent it all yet. But um, all of their money is through their their uh, capital improvements fund, so it isn't actually affecting your budget. Public health has some things uh, actually affecting your budget. 
but pretty many. Most of that. CARES Act money was 22000 Yeah, that health board, she put one in there because she didn't know. They have that one before we were down anyway, so it's going to be a bunch coming back. So which she usually has an amendment, so she just filed them in the middle for safety reasons. Right. The big yeah. chunk of that was 22000 that was from the CARES Act, which actually was collected in previous fiscal years, and they just didn't get it all spent until this year. Um, the GIS department, John, having a new employee, had to buy a desk, computer, and so on, so he needed a little more money in his uh, line to get the get the setup ready for the new employee, so that was that little bit. Um, IT, this one will be on for an action next week because the Fatima's application through, uh, through the um, INS for her status as a as a um, employee here as a uh, not a citizen employee requires a minimum salary amount that's a little bit more than what she has. So we have to add a thousand dollars to her salary for the rest of the fiscal year and bump the FICA and IPER to cover that to meet the minimum. It's actually going to be go up quite a bit more July 1st with the new salary study because that shows that she was underpaid anyway, but we have to get to that minimum as of next federal guidelines. So there's a little bit there. Um, in the miscellaneous county money, a big chunk of this is the is wrapping up the Upper Iowa Flood Reduction Program. There was another half a million dollars of spending there, so you can see it as an in and an out. So that's why there's both revenue and expenses for that. And then the other big one there was uh, we're still spending up the American Rescue Plan money. There's over 400,000 of that that we collected in a previous fiscal year that we're still dispersing. So it looks like we're spending a lot more than what we took in, but that's because we have the money there waiting to get used up. Um, so there's also a little bit in that department for like the the 22,000 we spent for the Condry and Associates study that wasn't budgeted originally so we're adding that in um, 5,000 for the uh, work at the Smith building to get it nominated to the National Register um, those were most of oh, the money we spent for the from the opioid litigation money and so on. So that that's showing up in there as the miscellaneous county. And then uh, mental health, there was $254 left at the end of the fiscal year that we had to get transferred to the region because that fund is closed. So that's why we have to account for why we sent the remaining money, remaining money in. So those were the amendments, all pretty straightforward. And that's what will be on for a public hearing on uh, May 30th. Is that 69,000 on conservation? Is that the, the uh, grant from landfill? No, that it was, was a grant for a big chunk of it. Um, there was 14,000 in REAP grant, and then there was a grant for, I think it was called Water Trails, something like that. It was a $60,000 donation for some other uh, project they're working on, but I don't know the details for sure. 60,000 was donations where she's putting it, but actually it was the, the revenue is bigger than the expenses because she hasn't done all the things that she plans to do with that money yet. None of that was the salary or employee or anything. Anyone have any other questions on that review? Okay. If not, uh, next on the uh, agenda under miscellaneous is a solution contract. So solutions uh, provides our uh, finance and um, and uh, real estate uh, system, computer system here in that we use in the county internally. 
And so the assessors, our office and the treasurer's office are all on that. So from for like real estate perspective, perspective the assessors make updates in there on the third party software transferred into solutions so that it goes through the process for me to figure property taxes and the treasurer to collect them and also they provide the uh, amount for or the software for all of our financial software too so we're tracking all of our claims and everything goes through solutions so that's the program we're using there's really only two vendors in the state that provide county specific since we have very different financial system than a, than a private entity, they, there's only two in the state that provide county specific uh, software. There are a few counties that have a have their own software rating departments that do it in house. But uh, anyway, so solutions is the one we've been using for thirty or forty years, and so I wouldn't expect that we would. Have, make any changes, but we do need to sign a contract with them each year. I move to approve the solutions contract. I second. I have a motion and second to approve the solutions contract. Is there any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, consent agenda. Uh, one thing I want to note on the consent agenda before you approve that is a change in the minutes since the draft ones came out. Andy recommended in the uh, farmland lease language that we change to put the, the acres to be what FSA, FSA said. Well, well the there's, uh, acres. there's two things there's and, and the dollar amount to be in the in the three year lease, it is ten point three seven acres is a tillable amount. Yeah. But in the in the uh, eleven year we use the twelve point well, zero one. Yeah. So but if you figure the for acres you gotta use a ten point three seven yeah. on the thirty three thirty three yeah. to get so, the per acre. acre. So what we what Andy's recommending or what we have in the minutes rather than a formula for how to calculate is we put the actual dollar amount. So her bid was for ten dollars per acre more than the highest bid. So we took the highest bid and added one hundred twenty dollars and ten cents because that's twelve point zero one acres times ten dollars per acre. So we added that. So it was thirty four fifty three ten is what the lease would be. See how that works. So we took the highest bid and added. Ten dollars per acres times twelve point zero one acres, so that's one hundred and twenty dollars oh, and ten cents more. more. So that yeah, and highest the highest bid was thirty three thirty three. So thirty four fifty three ten is what the the amount, the is. amount would be. And so rather than having the calculated at language in the minutes, we put the actual dollar in the minutes. Thirty four fifty three ten. Thirty four fifty three ten. Yeah. So that was the only change since the, the draft minutes I sent out. I motion to approve with the yeah. uh, just a second. So if you figure the 10.3. We aren't dividing the acres. So her bid was $10 per acre more than the highest bid. The highest bid you had was 33.33. Didn't say anything about acres. So that was per year for the layout. So we took at 12.01 is the number of acres that FSA says it is. So we took 12.01 times the $10 per acre. Yeah. So that's $120.10. And we added that to the 3333 to get to get that yeah. much more than the highest. Okay. Yeah. So I'll motion to approve the minutes with the amendment of 3453.10 to the language in the farm contract. Is there a second? Second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda with the changes. Uh, is there any further discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Yes. I asked Andy to clarify the, whether or not we were boxing ourselves into a corner with the $10 more than the highest bid comment in that. And, oh, that's right. and that proper and uh, 
under the circumstance because I was my concern was would that impact us for our road bids and things of that nature and the of uh, opening can of worms, a can of worms on that because of that when it, it it could have been under the circumstances of that particular bid it it wasn't according to Andy. But we gotta be real careful about that because we don't want to yeah we can't create a precedent. Yeah and she sought legal assistance on doing it that yeah. way. Yeah. And that's their saving grace, according to Annie, was that there was a maximum stated. So if the idea is that what if two people had su submitted yeah. bids that were we want to do ten dollars more than the highest that. bid, well then you'd have to they both bid mm -hmm. each other till they hit their maximums, and then you would use the maximum amounts just like you would a dollar specific dollar amount bid. Right. We might be wise in the future to make sure that it's just a fixed number. Yes. Fixed number bid so that we don't have that kind of a problem. But boy, that could open up a it could be very confusing. Not if you require a maximum bid to go with that, not to go over bid. It would just clean the whole yeah. yeah. bit the asset number. I mean it take yeah. any yeah. variables out of there. I've never seen any other in my not in the contracting world, I never ever saw anything like that. No, I haven't either. The only other question I have is those parcels in Spillville, they're still kind of hanging out there for several months now, what we want to do with them. The last advice Andy gave was, if you want to maintain a, um, a mm -hmm. right easement, basically, for the city, you would have to establish the easement yourselves first before giving the parcels to the city or to the, your, or to the landowner, but that means that you would have to go through the process of establishing those easements. Otherwise, he said you could just give them to the landowner and let the city deal with that if and when they wanted to. Yeah, there may be, there's, there's conflict where they're like, maybe there is already easements on them. We don't want to win the title, but we better just let it be in somebody else's hands. The deal was that they were utilities easements, which yeah, are different utility. than yeah but the city doesn't have anything started on that yet so that should be the city's responsibility so should i just let annie know at his convenience to start the process of taking bids for these these two parcels i think it's good yeah. Yeah. To clean it up. Yeah. yeah yeah i've had both of the people there are two different parties that are interested so yeah. i'm asking what the status is they just didn't want to miss any mm -hmm. Deadlines or anything. Yeah, I start it, <clears throat> clean it up, let them deal with the city. Yep. Uh, do we have any committee reports? Yeah, hell for it, but let's just. So, historic preservation on Saturday was. Uh, they're they're moving forward with getting the uh, next book published. Not about a ninety thousand dollar expense. So I got a. You know, we we put out twenty. We back we back them with a twenty five hundred dollar budget line item for them, and they do I think a tremendous job of fundraising and and sales and so forth. Because that's a there there's a nine thousand dollar publishing cost to create that new book, and they had to they had the money and a set and ready to go. But I think it's commendable. I think Steve Johnson and that whole committee is that commission has done a really good job. It's impressive. <laughs> There's a webinar this Wednesday at 10 o'clock that the Tallgrass Prairie Center is putting on. The public's welcome to attend that too. Um, and they provide a link. It's an online webinar, 10, 10 a.m. this Wednesday on roadside vegetation management programs in the state of Iowa. Oh. If you need the link, let me know. Not a committee report, but we talked, or you talked to Andy about the. Getting well, estimates, getting estimates to have a financial or so accepts proposals for doing a financial analysis. And I don't, I gave him some of the info and I haven't heard back and so on that. But we did check, and we've done what we did in the process. Yeah. <laughs> I think Andy's out of the office. Yeah. He yeah. ended the office. Just two weeks, I think he was going to go. All right. Well, next on the agenda, we're going to take a tour of Spectrum Network. Um, I'd move to adjourn after that meeting. I'd second that. That's what I was going to ask. <laughs>
فیل بردن I'll be coming back here after the tour uh, is finished, after the lunch is finished to work in this room unless somebody else needs it then. I didn't see anybody on the schedule. Call Mike and tell him we'll be there in about what, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. That would be there. Yeah, Give us a chance to go to the restroom. Yeah, that should work. I still have no idea. You can leave it here. I don't know why we need it. Thank you. Okay.